New Tool Day Tuesday, where I share with you guys unique or useful tools that I myself use that I think you might be interested in. Today we're going to be talking about a pretty cool little tool, and what it is is a component tester, an electronics component tester. It tests diodes and capacitors and things like that. We'll run it through a gamut of tests and show you how it works. It's made by Long Runner, and it's the TC1. It's been around a couple of years now. It works really well, and as usual, I will put a link down below to everything in this video just in case you're interested. In the box, it comes with three test leads. It comes with the tester itself. It is battery operated and that is rechargeable, so it comes with a charge cable. It comes with extra pins in case you break them on the test leads, but you, know, you can buy these test leads anywhere and these are kind of cheap. It's actually the only part of this kit I don't like is the quality of these test leads. It also comes with a couple of different components so you can test it right out of the box in case you don't have components, but we have a whole lot of components on our workbench and we're going to test some things and see just how well this thing works. This thing's pretty cool. It tests a variety of different components. It tests everything from capacitors and resistors resistors and transistors and uh, it'll even test IR function out of your remote control and you're probably wondering how does it do all of those functions with just one button well it's pretty intelligent and the software inside is well it's pretty cool because of the software it makes it really easy to test different components and you basically just have a zip socket that's labeled one two and three so you have three inputs you can use any three input that you want to. It's smart enough to figure out what's plugged into it. Those inputs are also repeated across the ZIF socket. So if you have a larger component that you need the space on, you could just pick one across the board and connect it. There's some other pins down here, K, A, and A, and those are only used if you're testing a Zener diode. Everything else gets plugged into pins one, two, and three. Now let's go ahead and put this thing to the test. I'm gonna take a transistor and I'm going to plug it into pins one, two, and three. We're going to hit the test button and it's not only going to tell us that it's a transistor it's going to give us the pin layout of that transistor and the values as well and it's pretty quick as you can see how about a light emitting diode let's see what it does and you can see the diode flashed a couple of times down here on the bottom and it's going to tell us that it's a diode and it's also going to tell us which one is the cathode and the anode it gives you the pin layout on the bottom i didn't plug it into three i only plugged it into pins one and two so you can see it gave me the results back if i try to confuse it and i plug it into pins three and pins one and we hit test it'll still figure out what it is and it still knows what pins it's plugged in. It's very intelligent. Just when you think that alone is impressive, if you plug two different LEDs into the ZIF socket, this time I have one across pins one and three, and I have one across pins two and three, is it gonna be smart enough to figure out that there are two diodes plugged into it? Or is it gonna get confused? Let's find out. They're both flashing. And not only did it figure out that there were two different diodes in there, it also told us the pin layout of those diodes and where the anode and cathodes are. Let's try a capacitor and see how well it does with that. So we're going to go across pins one and three, hit the test button. And there you go. It tells you the value of the capacitor and it knows it's connected to pins one and three. We're going to test a resistor. We're using pins one and three. Lock it down, hit the test button. And the value of that resistor is 81.3 ohms. That's a whole lot easier than reading the bands when you have old eyes like me, huh? The Zener diodes get plugged down in here into the special ports, K, A, and A. Let's plug a Zener diode in and see what it does for us. And check that out. It gives us the pin layout of the diode and it also gives us the Zener voltage, which is very handy, specifically if you don't have any data sheets on the diodes that you happen to have. Now, I'm not going to go over all of the components of this thing can test. That would be a much longer video than I think anyone would care about. If you are really interested in the amount of components that it can test, just click the link down below in the description and you can read all about it. I do want to show you one other thing that is kind of interesting and it has an IR receiver. And if you point a remote control at it, that is IR, of course, it'll actually read the value and decode it for you and tell you what that is. So it's kind of interesting to press different buttons on different remotes and read those values. It's kind of surprising how many buttons are actually the same across different brands of remotes. So there you have my quick and dirty review of the Long Runner Tester TC1. If you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos, and at the very least, you might be entertained.